Year 6 Maths Revision, Mixed Calculations and Topics, Spring 1, Part 7. There are 10 questions. For each number, you choose either A or B, or do both. Pause the video while you work it out. When you are finished, press play and I will talk through the method and give the answer. For 1A and 1B, I'd like you to do both of those, and I'd like you to find which for each shape, what fraction is shaded? Okay, so before we can work this out, we need to find out how many parts there are. So I'm going to put a dot in each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I also could have just gone one, two, three, and then I could have worked out how many rows and times it by four. There are twelve parts. So 12 is the denominator. Now I'm going to count how many are shaded and I'm going to tick each dot where it's shaded. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six twelfths. Six twelfths is equivalent to one half and you can clearly see that because the numerator, six, is half of the denominator, 12. Let's look at 1b. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Five times two is 10 because there are two rules. 10 is the denominator. Now I'm going to count the shaded parts. One, two. So two tenths. We can simplify two tenths to one fifth because we can divide two by one, sorry, two by two to get one and 10 by two to get five. So the answer is either six twelfths or a half or two tenths and a fifth. Now, do the same using that method for 2a and 2b. Pause the video and then we'll do it together. Okay, so 2a, we've got 1, 2, and then we've got, so that's 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 eighths. 4 eighths is the same as 1 half because 4 is half of 8. For this 1, 2b, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. And how many rows have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 is our denominator. And now we need to count the shaded pieces. There's quite a lot, so I'm going to tick these off very carefully. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the answer is 15 twentieths. If you are asked to simplify this, you need to find what is the highest common multiple, the highest common factor, sorry, that you can divide them both by. The highest common factor of 15 and 20 is five. So if I do 15 divided by five, that's three. And if I do 20 divided by five, that's four. So 15 twentieths is three quarters. 3a, you need to find three quarters of 28 and four ninths of 36. Press pause and we'll do it together. Okay, so first things first, we divide by the denominator. 28 divided by four equals seven. And then we times that answer by the numerator. Seven times three is 21. So for this one, we do 36 divided by 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4, because 4 times 9 is 36. And now we need to do 4 times 4, because we're timesing this answer by the numerator. That's 16. So 3 quarters of 28 is 21, and 4 ninths of 36 is 16. We now need to multiply two numbers by 10 and multiply two numbers by 100. So use your place value columns. And remember, when we multiply by 10, the digits move one place to the left. And when we multiply by 100, the digits, moves, digits move two places to the left. Press pause and work it out. Okay, so we've got here 3.5. So if I change colour, this is the ones column. There's my decimal place. This is the tenths column. 
This is the tens column. This is the hundreds column. We don't need any more. So when we multiply by 10, the digits move one place left. So the three is going to move one. So it's going to come 35. And we don't need the decimal place anymore because there's no decimal. So 3.5 times 10 is 35. Let's do the next one. So it's 4.73. So four goes in the ones column. Point seven three. We've actually got a hundredths column now. Three hundredths, seven tenths, four ones. And the digits are all going to move one place left. So the four is going to move up. So it's going to become 47.3. So in this example, we do need the decimal point because there is still a, des uh, a digit in one of the decimals columns in the tenths column. So it's 47.3. 47. Point three. 47 point three. We're going to do the same thing over on this side, except this time we're multiplying by 100. So there's our ones column. There's our tenths column. And we're going to put in two. Let's just change the colour so it stands out a bit more. 2.1. And we're multiplying by 100. So I'm going to need to put some new place value columns here. I've got my tens column and I've got my hundreds column. So the two is going to move two places left. It's going to go one, two. So two. The one is going to follow. And we've got zero, we've got nothing in the ones column. So we put a zero there to tell us there are no ones. We don't need a decimal point. So that's 210. Let's do this now for 5.23. 5.23. 5 we now need to add the hundredths column. And we're going to move two places left. So the 5 is going to go here, the 2 is going to go here, and the 3 is going to go here. So it's 523, no decimal place. We've now got 3 twentieths add 4 tenths, and 1 third add 2 and 1 six. Please do them both, press pause, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so we have here two fractions that we're adding with different denominators. We can't add fractions when they have different denominators. So we're going to just look at our multiples. So 20, 40, 60, 80. They're, those are my 20s. And then I'll do my 10s. 10, 20. Now, I'm going to stop there because I've noticed straight away that 20 is a multiple of 10. That means we can keep 3 twentieths the same. And we only need to change 4 tenths. So 10 becomes 20. Now, whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. We've times 10 by 2. So we, we times 4 by 2, which is 8. So we can add them now. So 20 stays the same. It's 11 twentieths. That fraction cannot be simplified any further. Um, so we're going to leave it as 11 twentieths. Now, over on this side, we've got one third add two and one sixth. Again, we have got fractions with different denominators. But before we can add them, we need to change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So we do two times six, which is 12, plus one is 13. That's 13 sixths. And we're adding one third. Now, we can't add them because the denominators are different. However, I've just noticed something, and it's like the last example we just did. 6 is a multiple of 3. That means we can change the third fraction into sixths. So we can keep 13 sixths the same. We can change this 3 to 6, which means we've times it by 2. We do the same to the denominator. So... That is now going to be, the sixths stay the same, 15 sixths. If you would like to write that as a mixed number, 
6 goes into 15 two times because that's 12. So we have two holes uh, and then that leaves 3 sixths over because 15 take away 12 is 3. We can even simplify that further because 3 sixths is 1 half. So the answer is 1 and a half. However, if you got 15 sixths, well done. But if you wanted to give it as a mixed number in its simplest form, two and a half. Same process again for these two fractions. Press pause and then we'll do it together. Okay. Three quarters add one third. Now, four is not a multiple of three. So we're going to have to change both of those. So four, eight, twelve. 16, 20, 3, 6, 9, 12. So I've noticed that 12 is a common multiple. So we're going to be changing both of those to 12. What have I done to 4? 4 times 3 is 12, so 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12, so 1 times 4 is 4. And let's just double check that. 12, 12, I times the 4 by 3. Yep, that side's okay. 3 to 12, to, yeah. Okay, so the denominator is going to be 12, and it's 9, 13 twelfths. If you want to write it as a mixed number, 12 goes into 13 once, so that's one whole with 1 twelfth. Over on this side, we've got a mixed number, take away a half. Before we can do anything, we need to change our mixed number to an improper fraction. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1, so that's 11 fifths, take away 1 half. We can't do this because the denominators are different. So I'm going to write my 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the new denominator is 10. So now what have we done to 5? We've times it by 2, so we do the same to 11. So it's 22 tenths. What have we done to 2? We've times it by 5 to make 10, so we do the same to that. So it's 22 take away 5. So the 10 stays the same. 22 take away 5 is 17. So that's 17 tenths. Actually, no, it's not. 22 take away 5, so take off the 2 is 20, take, uh, yeah, 17 tenths. As a mixed number, 10 goes into 17 once, so that's one whole, and 7 tenths. Okay, do both of these sides, Roman numerals, press pause and then we'll do it together. Okay, 672, so 600, we do 500, which is D plus C, which is 100. So that makes 600. 70, we do L, which is 50, XX, which is 10, 20, so 50, 60, 70, and then we do two of those. So it's DCL, XX, 2. 1,520, 1,000 is M, 500 is D, 20 is XX. 3,424, so 3,000 is MMM, 400, we need to do CD, now, D is 500, but to make 400, we take away 100, and we do that by putting 100 before, and then 24 would be XX, and 4 is IV, just like I just showed you with 400, 4 is 5 take away 1, so 2,520, MM, 520. Right, I want you now to find the perimeter, which is the distance around the outside, and the area, which we did in one of our recent lessons. Press pause and we'll do it together. Okay, 8A, the square. A square, all the sides are the same, so if this side is 5, they're all 5. 5 times 4 is 20, so the perimeter is 20 metres. The area, you multiply, you times 
the width by the length. So the width, sorry, is the one along the top there. That's the width. Sorry, no, that's the length. And this is the width. So it's going to be 5 times 5, which is 25 metres, but it's squared metres. So for area, you always put that little 2. So the perimeter. A rectangle, we know that the opposite sides are the same. So it's 6 add 6 is 12. 2.5 add 2.5 is 5. So 12 add 5 is 17. So the perimeter is 17 metres. Now, the area, you times the length by the width. So it's 6 times 2.5. Now, I don't really have much space here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move that across. And I'm going to do, use a different colour. I'm going to do 2.5 times 6. Put my decimal point in my answer. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. Let's just go over that again. 6 times 5 is 30, so 0, 3. 6 times 2, 12, 34. So the answer is 15 squared metres. Now, this is a little bit trickier. Here, you've got a regular pentagon. And I am telling you that the perimeter all the way around is 15 metres. So if all the way around is 15 metres, what would one side be? For 9b, I'm telling you that's a regular decagon and the perimeter is 30. So what is one side? So press pause, see if you can work it out and then we'll do it together. Okay, so a pentagon is five sides. A regular pentagon is five sides that are all the same. So to find one side, if all the way around is 15 metres and each side is the same and there are five, we're finding a fraction. We're finding one fifth. So we need to do 15 divided by five, which is three meters. Now, maybe you can now do the decagon. So you might want to press pause again. If not, I'll go through it now. Right. Decagon, 10 sides. Regular, all the same. So there are 10 sides. The whole perimeter is 30. So if we do 30 divided by 10, the answer is 3. So one side is three meters. For 10a and 10b, I would like you to write the decimal equivalent for each fraction. Press pause and then we'll do it together. So, so half is 0 0.5, three quarters, 0 0.75, one quarter, 0 0.25, one hundredth is 0 0.01, one-fifth, 0 0.2, three-tenths, 0 0.3, and one-eighth is 0 0.125. Now, let me just double-check because I was just distracted. So, that's correct, that's correct. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in our next lesson.